is really an honor. I really appreciate you inviting us. As a member from the Tampa Bay area, a high threat urban area, as you know, that is vulnerable to natural disasters, I know the vital role that the fire service plays in preparing for and responding to all hazards. And I also chair the Public Safety Committee, first the Substantive Committee and also the Appropriations Committee in Tallahassee, so I'm very familiar with all the great things you do. Thank you all for what you do uh, for our nation. I want to thank you for having me here this morning to provide an update on the activities of the Committee on Homeland Security Subcommittee on Emergency Preparedness, Response, and Communications. The subcommittee has had a busy year thus far. Yesterday we held a hearing assessing the impact of the post-Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act on FEMA's operation. Administrator Fugate, another Floridian, he does a great job, testified and we considered the progress that FEMA has made since Hurricane Katrina. Of course we know that improvements can still be made. One focus of the hearing was communications both interoperable communications and efforts to better alert the public to hazards. Committee members follow up on a hearing uh, the subcommittee held earlier this year on the integrated public alert and warning system. Members are particularly interested in the personal localized alerting network that will be rolled out in New York City and Washington, D.C. later this fall, and nationally, uh, we hope, uh, the early part of next year. The more information we can provide to individuals to get them out of harm's way and to better target the efforts of first responders, the better. Interoperability was also discussed at the hearing, and I know that it's an issue close to your hearts. Uh, ten years after September 11th, interoperability for first responders, of course, remains a challenge, and we'll continue to focus on that. You will be pleased to know that the Committee on Homeland Security included a provision allocating the D-Block to public safety and the DHS authorization bill. <laughs> I will tell you we still have some work to do. You probably know that. Uh, but that, that's a real good sign and I'm pleased that the Chairman King is the leader. And by the way, he's, he's outstanding, I don't have to tell you. Uh, next month, the subcommittee will further its consideration of communications issues when we hold a hearing on the various communication offices and functions within the uh, Department of Homeland Security. We must ensure that these offices are coordinating their efforts and are providing consistent guidance and support to you as you work to enhance your communications. The subcommittee, uh, the subcommittee has also held hearings on WMD prevention and preparedness legislation and medical countermeasures research, development, acquisition, and distribution. We must ensure that we are prepared for a chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear. <laughs> I think that's my time. <laughs> <laughs> Not <Well>, much longer. <laughs> <laughs> the subcommittee has also, or maybe there's a vote. That <laughs> The subcommittee has also held hearings and briefings on the National Exercise Program, Disaster Assistance, and uh, implementation of the Presidential Policy Directive 8. Next week, we will receive an update from the Secret Service and FEMA on their efforts to work with the first responders and emergency management officials to prepare for the 2012 Republican and Democratic National Conventions. As you know, the Republican Convention, convention is my, in my backyard. So, uh, I'll be ready for that. We'll be very busy. Uh, and I'll be working with the local authorities. Uh, looking into next year, the subcommittee is planning hearings on a number of topics I think will interest you. We plan to continue our oversight of medical countermeasures issues and with the hearing considering specific distribution needs and challenges as they relate to emergency response providers, such as voluntary vaccination programs. These providers will be on the front lines responding to chemical and biological attacks, and we must ensure they are protected. The subcommittee is also planning a hearing to consider the efforts of the DHS Science and Technology Directorates First Responders Division to work with emergency response providers to develop new technology that addresses capability gaps 
or enhances current operations and equipment. There is definite room for improvement in SNT's ability to research, develop, and get technology to market that will improve the safety and response capabilities of first responders. We are continuing to monitor the appropriations process, as you know, this year. I understand the Homeland Security Bill is currently being negotiated, but we don't yet have a timeline for when these negotiations will be completed. I, along with many members of our committee, have supported increased funding levels for the fire and safety, the safer programs, and we are monitoring the current bills to ensure these programs receive the funding they deserve. In closing, I hope you will consider me and my staff. We want to work with you on the issues I've mentioned and other issues of importance. Thank you very much.